Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? Got him. All right. Oh, yeah. Quality Green Bay fish here. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Oh, <laughs> what a specimen. Here he comes, man, get him. What a fish. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Well, if ever there was a weekend where we'd probably get a free pass for doing a rerun, this weekend would be it. We're up here in the beautiful Sunset Lodge up here on Oak Island on Lake of the Woods. Uh, Windchill temps out there right now are running about 45, 50 below. Uh, everybody in the ice belt is experiencing this cold front right now. There's nowhere to run, there's nowhere to hide. We've done some fancy maneuvering this year to try to get you know, out in front of or in behind some cold fronts. This one's so big, there's just no way to get around it. And I think just pride is making it impossible for us to at least not try to get a show this week. So what we're doing is we're up here out of Sunset Lodge. And we're gonna do some crappie fishing. And why we chose to do this show this week under these conditions is pretty simple. We wanted to do it at a time of the winter where any information would still be useful to the people that watch the show because this crappie bite up here uh, out of the northwest angle is phenomenal February and March. Here we are late, late, late January. If these crappies are going, you'll know about it and still have time to come up here, get out with the guys at Sunset Lodge and get in on some massive 14, 15 and even 16 inch crappies. We were down in Kansas two weeks ago and we got on some big white crappies. This week, it's all about the black crappies. Mm. As James mentioned, it's extremely cold outside, and what we're doing right now is getting a game plan together. We're putting uh, some waypoints on our GPS units and doing our best to make sure that any moves we do make are minimal at best, so we can get Short. to our spot and be very safe about it. So Now the next move is just trying to find the gumption to get up there on the ice. <laughs> I think we'll be able to do it. You know, it's very cold outside, but the one thing that's nice about up here in the angle is there's lots of islands. So. Thankfully, the Snowville Trail takes us snaking through a bunch of islands. Hopefully, they're a good windbreak, and uh, as long as we stay on the trail, I think we should be just fine. So uh, we've got breakfast in our bellies. Uh, the next you see from us, we're going to be out there on the ice somewhere. And uh, God bless the otters. There's not going to be a lot of our time spent running around out there on the ice today. It's just going to be too cold. So stick around. I do believe you're going to enjoy the show. Oh, you're going to get pounded. Seems pretty angry. Do it, do it, do it. Keep going, keep going up. Thunk. Oh! There he is, bud. Oh! <laughs> Hooked up, just getting going. This is wonderful. <laughs> I got one too, buddy. We got fish on the screen, my man. Okay, <laughs> you've got two on yours. I mean, we're probably seeing the same fish. I got two on mine. Oh this man. This fighting awesome too. We put so much into this decision. We were, we were just going back and forth. Should we even be considering coming out here to do this fishing when it's this cold? And you drop the transducers down on something like this, and you see the LX7s, the LX9s just light up like this with fish down there. Worth every bit of it. Dude. <laughs> wow. That's why we come here, man. Nice. Lake of the Woods has such a good crappie population, and everybody thinks about the walleye fishing. You get up here in the islands, and it's big black crappies. Yeah. This 14s, 15s, even an occasional 16-inch fish. That's why we're here. Mine's a little short. Mine's 12, and... Uh... To tell you the truth, James, most of these situations, we probably wouldn't be releasing any fish, but we're just shallow enough. You know, we're catching fish out of 20, 25 feet of water. These fish will be fine. Well, mine went down no problem. <laughs> like, like a rocket. <laughs> and here's what I love to see. There's the one I just released going back down. There's a big boy sitting down there at the bottom. You know, so we've got most of these fish coming in right about that 25 to 22, 23 foot of water range. Uh, and the nice thing about Lake of the Woods is they always run big. And you know, we were down in Kansas two weeks ago catching giant white crappies. And at that time we talked about, you know, uh, the drive to Kansas was almost the exact same 
uh, from Minneapolis as it is to come up here into the islands, up here in the northwest angle, to fish these crappies at a sunset lodge. And uh, the, the fisheries are comparable as far as size, structure. Very common to get 14, 15, and 16 inch crappies up here. And you can go anywhere in Minnesota and catch an 11 inch crappie. Very few places will produce a two, two and a half pound crappie on a regular basis, and this is one of them. Enough talking, more catching please. <laughs> All new this season, Trigger X soft baits are now available in micro-sized offerings for panfish. The Trigger X panfish series features seven new baits that rely on the proven ACT formula for success. Action, color, and taste. A combination that ensures fish will bite and hold on tight. Designed to mimic their natural counterparts, each innovative body shape moves with a fluid and seductive motion making the Trigger X panfish soft baits a must-have for all serious panfish anglers. There is a giant down here on my LX9. The trick here has been keep the bait three, four feet above the fish. You don't want to drop it right down on their nose. I'm sure that's got a little bit to do with just the, the way they feed, which is always up, but also keep it above their heads. It's easier for them to silhouette those baits because you know, it's Lake of the Woods. The water clarity is very stained here. The last thing you want to do is fish a bait a couple inches off the bottom because it's going to be really hard for any predator like a crappies that has his eyes kind of on the top of his head to find anything that low in the water column. Here he comes. Well, and crappies are classic up hitters. Ha! Was that an up hit? He up hit me nice. <laughs> <laughs> crappies are classic up hitters, and when you fish the bait above them, you give you give the power to them. They come up and hit it when they want to, and by not forcing the situation in these cold fronts, it really makes a difference. We call him a scamp, just a little guy. And so often, what's happening is is you'll get a fish that'll come up and look at it like that one did, and he'll come down, but his disinterest almost makes his buddy more interested. And a lot of times, like is happening right now, that other fish is slowly rising. As James was referencing, you know, crappies have eyes on the top of their heads. They like feeding upward. What we're doing is we're not harassing them by bringing the bait right down on, on top of their noggin. We're staying up above them and letting them make the decision to come up when they're ready, as much as four or five feet. And so often what we've seen happen is one fish will come up and he'll get slightly disinterested, but he'll hang there. And his disinterest almost seems to trigger the other fish in the school to come up and say, hey, if you ain't gonna have it, I'll take it's it. It's fishing's meanest practical joke. <laughs> I was going to get that one, don't you get it? Then, then the guy's buddy eats it, and of course Reverse he's psychology for fishes, right? Here he comes. Watch that rod tip. Come on. There he goes. Nice work. I am so glad I am not sitting on the couch regretting the decision to stay home. Double. Yes, indeed. Ooh. There, sweetheart. Eater. Mine's just a tiny guy. He is, huh? Yep, just a little fry. He's gonna go right back. They're just coming in in droves, aren't they? Well, these are ideal uh, conditions for the crappies up here. Um, you know, a lot of times you fish clear bodies of water where you have good populations of crappies and you want kind of like uh, low light periods right. or, or cloud cover. Here on Lake of the Woods, because it's such stained water, uh, you really want these bright sunny days. I mean, the crappies just go nuts. They feed visually, you know, they're not yeah. much for sniffing out their next meal or sure. anything. So uh, if anything that helps them see, find food in these stained waters really helps. Ooh, I got a nice mark down there. Come of on. course, so do I, so it is a bit of a race. <laughs> there he goes, got him. Dude, I could do this all day long. In fact, I think we will do this all day long. I think they're coming from that way. <laughs> <laughs> not a giant, not a, not a Lake of the Woods giant by any means. Oop. Fishing a 1 16th ounce pug bug. That's the largest one they make. And that's the uh, Trigger X spike worm. Both are very bright. We've got stained water here. We're gonna keep everything in the white, uh, bright pink, chartreuse, bright green color, kind of color spectrum here. That always seems to work. Uh, more often than not, somebody should have something white down though. I've done well so far in this chartreuse orange combination, mostly because I'm still hung up on it from Kansas. Sure. I just like the color now. Hey, confidence baits, it's a big deal. You're fishing a white mustache worm, correct? Yeah, uh, pink and white, actually. Pink and white. Yep. But just a great bait. Uh, one of the things we really want to talk about is what's bringing these fish in numbers to this particular area. And, you know, Lake of the Woods is, has earned its name because uh, you got, what, 10,000 islands up here, 14,000 yeah, islands. It's just wild. There's just endless fingers and bays and cuts and turns and every one of those bays has a crappie population in it up here during the summer months. 
And as you get into mid to late winter like this, those crappies pull out of those shallow areas and start to look for your classic mud bottom basin areas to spend the rest of the winter. Well, so what we're doing is we're camped outside of a bay, uh, basically right at the mouth. And the, the, the point is probably 100 yards off to my left here. And uh, all the crappies that have been up there during the summer have trickled out and have hit this flat portion of the basin. It's about uh, 27 to maybe about 30 feet deep, soft bottom. So those are the areas you're looking for. And once you see what you're looking for, it's really easy to understand. I spend a lot of my days looking at maps and uh, maps are obviously an important strategy to what you're gonna be doing out here. Like James said, once you visualize what it is that you're looking for in terms of these basins, these, these areas that, uh, that these fish are congregating, you're gonna be able to look at a contour map and definitely be able to pick out a whole bunch more areas and consider it kind of a milk run, so to speak, uh, to hit and check out. You might not find crappies in every spot, but the nice part is, is with just a couple holes drilling, putting those transducers out from your Markham, you're gonna be able to find fish. Or you can do what we did. We know what to look for, but while we were eating breakfast this morning, we talked to the guys at Sunset Lodge and they kind of did the, hey, this spot looks good. What do you guys think? And the guys at <laughs> the bar kind of did this. Yeah, no, yeah, that, no, that's good. You bet, try that. So that's, uh, hey, we're not too proud. No. I mean, we know what we're looking for, but we're still gonna talk to the guys there at Sunset and get uh, some local intel as well particularly on a day when it's so blessed cold. Ooh, I got a nice mark down there. Yeah, if I can take home four or five of these 11, 12 inch crappies, I'm a happy dude. Come here, buddy. I think that might be another one for the pile. He's not the giant that I thought he was gonna be. What's that one? Just over 10 and a half. 10 and a half, 11 inches. We'll ice his hinder. We should put like a dollar bet on that fish that's just hanging out there on the bottom because he's been there for like two minutes. He's just, eh. We're gonna turn this into horse racing just yet. Maybe not now, but soon. <laughs> The new Extreme Thermal Shelters from Otter feature a new look and unmatched protection from the elements. The fully insulated Pro XT 1200 features a 1200 denier shell built for extreme conditions, while the Thermal Top XT 650 features a 650 denier shell that locks in heat and eliminates condensation. All Extreme Thermal Shelters are built on Otter's legendary roto-molded sled and proven oversized square tube frames. The all new Extreme Thermal Shelters from Otter, built tougher, stronger, smarter. If we spend any more time in these otters this year, I mean, of course we've had to. Yeah. It's just been so cold. I'm gonna have to like hang pictures and curtains. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I've got canvas growing on my backside. <laughs> we're, we're lucky to have them. I can just never remember a winter that's even come close to this since I was like a kid. You know, everybody's got that old story. When I was a kid, we had real winters. This is definitely a real winter. That's a good old fashioned. Wow. Finally, huh? Did you see that bite? No. That was so deliberate. It was literally like he went up and said, oh, <laughs> that was it. Not a lot to it. Oh, he's a little tangled. It's not a horrible fish. Not bad. But not like some of the ones we've pulled through. And you have another one sitting down there. Always nice when you got one ready and waiting. I like it. You have like a filthy loaded screen. Ah! Oh. Nice. It's a nicer fish too. This thing has the rod doubled that over. That fish eyeballed, circled. He thought so long and hard before he was gonna eat. Oh, come on baby. Just taking it easy. Oh yeah. An El Giento. <laughs> Those mustache worms are just big fish money. Look at this thing. Boom. Right in the top of his jaw. That looks like a big bait, but not for these fish. Not, not even, not not even close. And uh, even, even sunfish have no issue getting this in their mouth. And I tell you what, don't worry about being too large for a lot of fish like these. And a crappie like this will eat a big meal. Oh, I mean, he's used to eating two, three inch perch. <laughs> Just pretty, just a real pretty fish, look at that. But like we talked about earlier, one of those fish we want to let go as well. Yep, well, he's gonna release well. And Nicely there's the kick. <laughs> they release so nice, I uh. Would you happen to have one of those mustache worms in white? 
I believe I do. Can I get that from you? I don't know. How nice are you going to be? Well, look who you're talking to. <laughs> you know I'm not going to be very nice. <laughs> yeah, I got a pile of them, my man. Good deal. One of the big ones. One of the big ones. Yep. Because this smaller whip tail has caught a lot of fish, just hasn't done the size that that mustache worm has done. Big baits. Big, no doubt. Big baits, big Well, fish. I was thinking that uh, we'd do the, um, the whip tail because it's so, so long. Right. I was hoping that would be kind of perceived as a long profile bait. Thinking Z, 15 inch or here we come. <laughs> I like that green. That That's a nice color, actually. It's a little bit lighter in the back, a little bit darker on the top. Ooh. Don't ever tell me I didn't do anything nice. I'll trade Aww. you. There Straight you. up? Straight up trade. I like it. That's what goes on next. I got one that's staring at me right now. Catch him. Come on, fish. There he goes. Yep. Bluegills, crappies, man. I mean, there's a lot of good soft plastics out there, but this mustache worm is one that just produces big, big fish. I can't wait to see it. I bet you do. Look at that. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Joel Nelson. <laughs> that's money right there. Another thickie. Look at how thick that one is, too. That's my biggest fish of the day. It's Thank beautiful. you. I appreciate <laughs> the uh, the loaner. That was a fair trade on that, you know, with that jig. Let's do a little measurito here. Fish measurement. 13 and a half. Can I get a, a second, a spot oh, on that? Oh, I will second that motion. You don't care. I don't blame That's you. beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful fish. We're going to let that one go. A little bit bigger than what I want to keep today. And I know I'm going to have no problem getting my five. So <laughs> back you go, sweetheart. Down she goes. More fish down there, James. I know there is. Oh! oh. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that bend, huh? Nice. It is wonderful to feel these fish stretch that line. Man, alive. There he goes. Oh, he got off. <laughs> oh, get out from out there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is what we come to Lake of the Woods for. <laughs> That doesn't even, oh my God, it doesn't even feel right. It's got like a bass mouth on it. Look at that thing. Oh my goodness. Nice. That is a great big fish. And I don't know if you can see the thickness and the girth on this fish. So I'm going to put this one to a tape, obviously, because uh, this might be one of the bigger ones we catch today. Closed mouth with a pinch, just over that 14 inch mark. But a fish like this, being as big as it is, as special as it is, we're going to do our best to release. So I can't wait to watch her swim away. Beautiful fish. Gone. <laughs> that was awesome. I want to do it again. Skeeter Boat Center, with its flagship dealership located in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, has opened a second location in Ramsey, Minnesota, to better serve their customers. Stop in and check out the largest selection of Skeeter boats in the Upper Midwest, including an extensive inventory of MX and WX models, and a wide range of Skeeter bass boats, all backed by our best price guarantee, and serviced by Yamaha 5-star service technicians. Find us online at SkeeterBoatCenter.com. And remember, our goal is to help you have fun fishing. If ever there was a day when you'd think like the classic conditions were against a good bite, yeah. it should be today. I mean, horrible cold front, 50, 55 degree temperature swing, winds, super high pressure now and the yeah. fish just keep eating. Bad barometer, we've been fielding a lot of questions on IDO fishing about specifically barometer conditions, when to fish, when not to fish. And just uh, kind of re reinstills the fact that uh, the best time to fish is really when you can get out and go fishing. Yep. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Got him. Oh, better fish, Joel. Better fish. What uh, What did that one do? Did he come up and just smash it? Or come no? up about five foot and occupied a whole lot of the flasher dial. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice. Man, my, my average size, since I put that mustache worm on, has just skyrocketed. No, I don't mind being shunned by those smaller fish to, to target those yeah. nicer fish like you're, you're getting. Oh, yeah, just a giant. Just a giant. <laughs> Look at that. Toad. <laughs> That's why we made the trip up here. You know, this whole crappie bite up here to Lake of the Woods, up in the angle, out of Sunset Lodge. They've got lots of different options. They've got U.S. options where you're going to fish in U.S. waters. They've got options for guys that are going to want to go up into Canada, explore the islands, get way up in there, fish for some remote crappies. 
The best part is we're airing this show late January. Actually, it'll probably be early February by the time it airs. And uh, this bite's just getting rolling. Uh, all the way through February into March, as long as the ice is good, this crappie bite gets better and better and better. So if this is something you want to do, these fish will be waiting here for you. <laughs> and it's just going to get, I mean, it's great today. It's going to get nuts. Board, Big fish. Board that fish. Board that fish. Well, you want me to board it because you got that 14 and a half inch thing, and this one isn't that big. You want to make <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think that that one will go 14 and a half. No, this one's 13 and a half. Ah. It's just giant thick. My view is just of his back straps. <laughs> it's just so Such a beautiful thick. fish. I'm going to let him go. You know, these fish are coming out of water where we can release them. I'm going to keep as, you know, a, a good number of those 11 inch fish. Yeah. Anything like this, you know, 12, 13, 14 inch fish, they're all going back. Whoosh! Bye. <laughs> he you know, said goodbye. Here's as well. the bait that we're fishing. You know, any bass fisherman's going to recognize this type of presentation. It's kind of a wacky rig. A ball of plastic in the middle, two arms that go out in opposite directions. And when you jig that thing in the water, it's just doing little bat wings down there, just twitching. And just that larger profile bait made such a huge difference here in the average size of the crappies we're catching. Uh, I don't mind giving up a few 9, 10 inch fish for the, uh, you know, the occasional 13, 14 inch fish. That's a fair trade. <laughs> I still think we can break that 15 inch mark today though. Whoa! <laughs> We've been close, you know, 14 and change. Woo hoo! <laughs> and if we have to sort through some of these nicer fish to do it to get to the great big ones, I got no problem with that. That's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Look at that. Just about every single one of the fish that we've been catching today has been hooked right there in the roof of the mouth. And, you know, that's when the bite is good and when they're hitting the baits the way they should, that's where almost every crappie you ca catch should be buttoned up right there doesn't hurt them and they're never getting off. Yeah, beautiful fish. <laughs> Pick of a tail flap, huh? Makes a guy happy. But I like, I mean, I like the fact that, you know, you can catch crappies at a lot of different depths up here to Lake of the Woods. Yep. I mean, you can probably catch them a lot shallower than we are now. I know a lot of guys fish a lot deeper. Uh, 27 foot with a lot of the fish coming in, you know, 20, 21, 22 feet. They release real nice. Right. Makes a big difference, at least this way, we have the option, right? We're keeping a couple, but uh, those nicer ones can go back. You know, we've caught a lot of great crappies today, and we've shared a lot of good crappie catching information for this uh, area on Lake of the Woods. And one of the last things we need to share is, it's kind of a, uh, a doctor's hours, as far as bite <laughs> window on these crappies. We got out here about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, and the fish really didn't get cracking until about 10. Now it's three o'clock and the bite has really slowed down. So it's time for us to pack up, which is gonna fit perfect with the day because it's supposed to be 26 degrees below zero by the time the sun goes down. I don't know about you, I don't wanna be here at that time. It's a safety issue as much as anything else. To get going now, what we can get back to our destination with light, makes me feel a little more comfortable about it. Absolutely. So as we pointed out earlier, we're on the very front edge of this crappie bite. Uh, Lake of the Woods up here in the islands is renowned for producing huge crappies. If you're looking to get in on this bite, give the guys at Sunset Lodge a call. They've been a huge help to us. They'll do the same for you. So from Joel and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. We did it, bud. We survived <laughs> the snowmageddon or whatever this one was. <laughs> for more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at in-depth outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.